You know where is in there? It's the motor for our new home. For your new home? Yeah. Sí. ¿Cuáles son sus pronósticos, Mr. López? Uh, that it is a red one. Yeah. This <laughs> one and it's not like new one. <laughs> <laughs> Please, camera. Qué chiquita. Wow. It's the same engine used. Amor is so pequeña. Yeah, that's great. Ah, the control cable. Control cable, yeah. Right, nice. Nossa, amor! Ah, isso é como a câmera. Oh, eles estão prontos. Nós precisamos tomar uma medida interna na barra, para verificar onde está a linha de água. Se a linha de água está, por exemplo, em um ponto de vista, nós precisamos expandir o antisifão, mínimo, de acordo com o ABYC 12 inches, ah, para a linha de água. Você lembra disso? Sim. Isso é o que está acontecendo. We disconnect that one and we extend. This engine is not turbocharged. Normally, in this point, you have the turbocharger. Ah, where the yeah. air. Yeah, but this is a natural aspiration. That exhaust. That's the muffler. Muffler. Water separator. Yeah. Look, this is the thermostat housing. That the input of the of the raw water pump coming from the sea cock. Mm. And that the plate. Look, the plate of the raw water pump. Okay. That the plate that you rem uh, that you remove to replace the impeller normally. You can prime with the handle priming pump or with the electrical that you install yeah, with the ignition cable. And they have other priming pump manual, look. Priming. Oh. And the input of the fuel is here and the fuel pass through the fuel filter and enter in the fuel injection pump. And this is the throttle. Look, they have the uh, the handle to connect to connect the extension of the cable. And this is an emergency stop. You connect one cable in the console, and when you oh, pull you the cable, you stop the engine. And this is the bracket uh, for the transmission cable. The transmission cable enter here, look, it's neutral, forward, and reverse. Uh -huh. Neutral, forward, and reverse, and the cable enter here, pass through here, and enter over there. And it's very simple, that's the, the return, the return to the fuel tank, and that's the input of the fuel uh, from, coming from the fuel tank. Remember that the fuel, only 20% is used in the combustion uh -huh. and 80% return into the tank. That's the start motor, come on, I explain. This is the positive, this is the big positive coming from the switch selector, the uh -huh. red one, uh -huh. enter over there. And this is the signal, this is the signal that is the yellow red connected with the start position in the ignition switch, that one. That's the yellow red. Uh, this is the oil pressure sensor and this is the temperature sensor. Uh, because we are, we are going to install additional gauge. The gauge, they have three terminals, ignition, signal, and ground. The signal is coming from this point and coming from this point. Signal for the oil pressure sensor and signal for the coolant temperature sensor. That fuse is, um, is for a emergency during the cranking and this is uh, if uh, something is wrong in the harness. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, they have the, the, main, the main tachometer and the tachometer is digital and they have a oil pressure temperature in, in that square area. You connect the harness at that point, you put the battery positive here, negative here, and bingo. In the boat we are going to suppose that this is the stringer. Uh, in between the stringer and the bracket we are going to put the flexible mounts with the rubber. You have the flexible mount? Yeah. These are the flexible motor mounts we were talking about. Yeah. So that oh, the, I understand when now. the engine is vibrating, it kind of distributes the vibration a little bit and doesn't shake the whole boat. Yeah, it it's, an, it's an, an, a, like a chuck absorber. So now the goal for the next week is to prepare everything to drop the engine on the boat. The old Westerbeek was a much bigger and wider engine than the new Beta, although they both produce the same horsepower. This means that the stringers of the boat are currently too wide to rest the engine on. As you can see, there's empty space on both sides. With that in mind, the dealer was kind enough to send us some aluminum brackets, which we're gonna bolt to our original stringers to cover the necessary space. 
To make sure we're gonna get the right fit, we took measurements and used the engine drawings to make a plywood jig of our engine and get a glance of how the final fit's supposed to look like. It was work, but much nicer work than grinding things and working with fiberglass. Unfortunately, these two things are still not out of our list. The stringers need an increase in height a little bit on the backside to correctly match the brackets we're gonna bolt to them. This includes grinding out the new paint, screwing on a piece of oak or hard wood, then fiberglassing it all together. Lesson learned, do not paint the engine room before making sure you don't need to work on your stringers. Sounds obvious, doesn't it? Well, now it does. I'll let you know how everything went on the next video. Warning. There's some real display of stupidity there, which I'm now working to fix, so be kind, because I'm already getting enough punishment. See you on the next one, and if you like the episode, you know what to do. Uh, what? Kubota. Oh. That's a good engine. Yeah, it's a good engine. It's a small engine, and it's with the transmission. It's very nice. Yeah, Kubota's high, high end, good stuff. It is for sale boats. My friend, I think that the, the, the price is good. No, it's Kubota. Kubota is excellent. And I can find parts easily? Yeah. yeah. All the four leads are Kubota. Yeah. The, the agricultural equipment, it, the majority is Kubota. And they're taking over John Deere. Yeah. All the other tractor companies are John going Deere, down right now. The equipment Kubota's of John Deere, the majority off. of the engines are...